Hello everyone, we are going to be looking at another exciting end game. This uh, position is from the game uh, Zabo and Fuster from uh, the Hungarian Chess Championship in 1946. Now who are these players? Some of you uh, chess enthusiasts out there may be familiar with uh, Leslo uh, Sabo. He was the Hungarian champion uh, not once but nine times. Uh, an interesting fact about him is, um, uh, first of all, he was born in 1917 and he died in 1998, so he lived a pretty long life. Uh, when he was young, um, he uh, in World War II, he was actually in a, in a, a forced uh, labor unit um, uh, during World War II uh, until he was um, uh, captured by the Russian army. It was an interesting uh, fact. Uh, he became a Grand Master in 1950, and he played in the Candidates Tournament on three separate occasions. His best result uh, was third place in 1956, and he had the white pieces here. His opponent <clears throat> is also Hungarian, uh, Giza Fuster, who uh, was born in 1910 and uh, was an international master. Uh, and he achieved that title in 1969. He was the Hungarian champ in 1941. Eventually, he migrated to Canada and uh, played uh, for their Olympic team. And um, he became uh, the captain. So, uh, two strong players here. Of course, Sazbo is uh, probably um, one of the strongest Hungarian players in history. So... Here, Fuster has the black pieces, and his back is up against the wall, obviously. Um, like I say in the other endgame video that I posted, uh, you have to first identify uh, the problem if you're the weaker side uh, in order uh, to solve it. Um, you can't really be uh, too general, but you have to try to be as specific uh, as possible. So here we can see that the major issue here in this position uh, although material is e equal, uh, black has these two separated pawns on the H and F file, uh, and the H pawn is extremely vulnerable. At least black's king is protecting the F pawn. Um, and it's black to move, by the way, because if his white's move, white can just play king g5. Um, so it's black's, black's move, uh, by the way. So, But the problem identified here is the guaranteed loss of the H pawn. Uh, there is no way uh, that black can hold on to that pawn. So if you're black, you have to try to figure out uh, the best way to give that pawn up. All right. If there is, if there's a way out, if not, then you might consider resigning, but you've identified the problem here that you really can't hold on to that H pawn and you're about to go down a pawn. So um, what do we do about it? All right. If you're white here, you have the advantage. You're about to win material. And uh, you simply want to uh, promote uh, one of the pawns. Now, it's time to extract uh, some principles here that you can take and use uh, in any other endgames. Uh, King of Pawn endgames of this nature. Because it's not really about solving this puzzle. It's about extracting the uh, principle uh, at hand and what you need to know to understand this position is you need to know about H pawns and um, A pawns and why they are particularly uh, not too good to have in the end games the problem with H pawns and A pawns is that if, if you're the stronger side it's very hard to win with those pawns because all the king has to do is get in the corner and there's no way to force the king out of the corner. So let's imagine this pawn, this pawn is off the board and white's H pawn is all the way up to H7. Well, to defend, black simply just goes in the corner and there's no way to drive the king out. If black, if white was uh, somehow to get around, um, say to the f file you know f8 or something like that there's no way to push the king out right all the typical flanking maneuvers that you will use uh in 
um, other positions, right, to squeeze the king out don't work when the king is on the H file or the A file because there's nowhere to go. You'll be off the board, right? So this is what makes um, H and A pawns particularly um, difficult. Uh, the only way you can win this game um, if you have a H and uh, A pawn is you have to prevent the king from getting to the corner. So, for example, if the king was way over here or here or something like that, then you could win. But as long as the king is able to get in front of the um, the um, stronger size pawn, he'll be able to draw because either stalemate um, <clears throat> will happen uh, as a result, or he'll just uh, pick up the material, or there'll be some type of uh, uh, repetition of of moves here. So once you understand that principle, and you understand about H pawns and A pawns being uh, bad, right, in most cases, or being, you know, very hard to win with, you can understand Black's move, or you can find Black's move here. So, yes, Black is going to lose this pawn so Fooster plays fantastic move in h4 and the idea is very simple if g takes h4 this is a simple draw for black black just simply marches his king over let's just make up some moves here Right, let's just take this pawn. <clears throat> Black just simply marches his king over to the corner, and there's no way that uh, white can uh, drive the king out of the corner. And this is what we were illustrating uh, earlier with the H pawns. Okay. Black would just simply keep moving uh, back and forth. Or he would just simply just win win the material. There's no way to get the the king out of the corner in, in that situation. So, this is the first idea that uh, Fooster is um, striving for, because with the pawns doubled, it does it, it's uh it, it's almost as if White only has one pawn here. Of course, uh, Sable being a very strong play, he doesn't go for it. He doesn't capture. Instead, he plays g4, which is the most logical move. Okay, so now what? Okay, so now he's played g4, and he still has the same idea. He's just going to go and grab this pawn. And now he'll just be up two pawns, and then he'll win like that, right? That's the idea. Again, with the same theme in mind as black, you already know that if you can't, um, create the position with with the H pawns. Like you're pretty much going going to lose this game because you're just going to be down material. So you have to figure out how to do it. And here you'll see a beautiful um, plan come to fruition here. So H3 first. And what this does is it forces um, it forces White to. Uh, move his king uh, back a little bit and give up some space in order to capture this pawn. And when white gives up space, black gains space. And we'll see how black utilizes the space in a second. So h3, king g5, king e7, king h4, king f6, king takes h3. And now, now what do you do? If you want, you could pause the video right here and try to figure it out yourself. This move is very critical. Here, and don't lie to yourself by um, putting it in the uh, table basis. Try to figure it out exactly what you would do. Right, I will pause the video right here and and try to figure out Black's move here. This is the this is probably the second most critical move in the game because obviously the first move 
was the most critical. But this one right here is life and death right here. You're either going to win or lose. Excuse me. You're either going to lose or draw based on this move. Because black doesn't really have any winning chances. It's trying to draw. So I gave you enough time to pause. So this is what black played. King G6. And you'll see why in a second. So King G6. And now King H4. F5. Again, creating the same type of idea. Again, if Sabo takes here, G takes F5 check, King takes F5. There's no way for White to win here. Because soon as he say he comes to G3, Black just runs in the corner. And so his other idea is to try to play a move like King uh, King H5 or something like that. But then King F5. Let's say here. King H6, King F6, H5, King F7, King H7, and if you notice, White's King can't get it, get out. So let's say he comes here, King F6. As soon as the White King tries to free himself from the H file. Then he just drops the pawn. So, again, same thing. If he goes here, king g5. And as you can see, the game ends in stalemate as white has basically locked himself in. So this is like the shows the downside again of these of these uh, H and A pawns. So this is Black's idea is to trade off the F pawns and then go into the end that we spoke about. But in order to um, draw this game, you must be able to see that from this position. From here, you have to be able to visualize uh, the position with just the H points. And this is um, what guided Fooster in his movements. So getting back to the game, King F6, King takes H3, King G6, exclamation mark. King H4, F5, and of course, Sabo didn't take. He, he, he knows his endings also. Again, he goes and he pushes. But... Most of you should be able to see. This is where it gets. It's pretty easy now. Because now black has a pass pawn also. And there's nothing to stop the pass pawn. Except the king. So all black has to do now. Is just keep pushing the pawn. F4. King G4. F3. Can't give up a queen. King takes. King takes G5. And they agree to a draw right here. And you see the ending right here. Now I just want to go back. And show you why king G6 was so important. Now, most of you would have played king g5 here because it's a natural move, right? Putting pressure on the pawn. It fixes the pawn. The king can't go here. And you can play f5. So what's wrong with that? The problem is, is after king g3, now the h pawn is ready to move with check. So then after f5, h4 check. King G6, and then the pawn passes. So G5, and now um, black is actually lost in this position. So that's why I was saying that move is so important. So Fooster stay calm and collected here and play King G6, which avoids this variation with F4. Perhaps he could have tried a move like King G3 here. And then you would have had the same same idea. And again, there's no uh, 
you know, there's no remedy here. So all you can do here is try to take, you know, the H pawn and bring it to the G file. So for instance, H3, and then you can take anyway. Again, if King takes you at the same position. But here is a dead draw too. And here is where you need to understand the opposition here. So black draws easily by maintaining the opposition either with king g7 or just g5. And that's a draw also. So going back to the starting position. Once you understand those principles that we laid out earlier, um, you can kind of find these moves, you know, pretty, pretty easily. Right there, you know, good moves, of course, but they're all they all have uh, underlying principles and ideas behind them. So the key is not necessarily just being able to solve a problem here and there like a one off. But you want to take the ex the principles and rules with you because you'll get in a position that's similar. Right? It might not be the exact same. There's millions and millions of position positional possibilities on the chessboard. So you might. Um, have a position that's similar and then you can apply those general principles see now that you understand how the h pawn and a pawn work and they're like drawbacks this the understanding might save you in a bad ending one time you know you might be down you know a pawn or something like that but you'll be able to draw because you understand the opposition and you understand that you can um, still draw even though you're down a pawn because you know that all you have to do is get your king in the corner. And again, what's good about knowing the fundamental ungames is that when you have a position like this, that's a little bit more complicated. You can kind of see through this and see the simple uh, ending, right? Um, <clears throat> afterwards. So here, again, it looks it looks dreary for black. It looks like black is totally lost. I mean, king is on the eighth rank. White, white's king is better. He's about to win a pawn. I mean, what else can you, what else can you ask for, right? He has all he has everything that you would want in the position. Like if you just looked at this position, you would you would say, yes, yeah, certainly uh, white is winning. But it's black's move. It's if it's white to move, white. If it's white to move, white just wins by playing king g five, and there's no um you know sacrificial possibilities made. But Black having the move here. He's able to save the day. And what's good about this game is that White played the best moves. Like he really tried to try to preserve the win here. And you can look this up on the table base, and you'll see that it is a, it is a draw. That um, Black played the only moves in uh, 1946 way before uh this chess computer era so i hope you enjoyed that video i'll be signing off now please check my links below please support my channel click the uh, subscribe button thumbs up button so to move the video up in the algorithms um on youtube also check the links below i put um, some more end game dvds on there and um let me hear your comments below what you think about this uh, particular end game. And if there's other end games that you would like me to look at, uh, just message me and I'll, I'll look at them for you. All right. And I'll get back to you soon. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys soon.